just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. Now, this month till February 21st, in all of the liquor legends in Queensland, if you spend $30, you get a six pack of Bloke Midi for 10 bucks. That is right. Every single liquor legends in Queensland currently, if they don't have any stock, just ask them to order more in. They've either sold out or they just need to get some more in. But if you spend 30 bucks until Feb February 21st, $30, you get a six pack of Bloke Midi for $10. So get into your local Liquor Legends, independently owned, all that good stuff, and support not only Liquor Legends, but grab a case of Bloke Midi and give her a try. But we've got the great Jai Arrow here. I'm so happy to have you on, bro. How you been? Nah, very good, very good. Um, under different circumstances, I was on the Gold Coast. I remember last time I did that. Yeah. Remember, you picked me up for you know, so hopefully there's no you knows um, in oh, this yeah. Yeah, in this podcast. I, f I feel like I've come a long way since then, so excited to be back. Was It, it was in the middle of the podcast, I was like, I think you're saying you know a lot, but I just need <laughs> yeah. to stop saying that. That's crazy. I've been a young kid, a young kid not knowing what to say, so yeah. I oh, reckon I've man. come a long way, I've grown up <laughs> it's, a little it's, bit. It's funny, because like if I go back to my first podcast as well, I, there's shit that I constantly say. Like, yeah. you know, whether it's, you know, um, like, like's a big one. Yeah, like's a huge one. You know, we um, actually, we had, you know who we had? This is a bit of fucking goss for you. We had Keon on and it was great. Like, <laughs> it was so good. Bro, we had to cut out, I reckon, 50 bucks. <laughs> really? Because every second word he'd be like, fucking, fucking, fucking. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say Keon's a man of many words. So that's interesting. <laughs> Mate, he was great. He yeah. was really good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, his story was like, and it got like heaps of traction too. One of our... When it comes to like snippets that we put on Instagram, one of our biggest we've done. Well, he's a pretty closed up book and not many people would know many things about him. So yeah, yep. probably makes sense. But um, yeah, that's interesting about Keon. Yeah, a lot of swear words though. Yeah. Had to fucking clean it up for the big fella. Potty mouth. <laughs> uh, mate, how's the uh, the preseason going? Yeah, it's pretty standard. How really? many houses have you trained down? Oh, not many. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a bit of trouble with my hammy. So okay, yep. on our off-season camp, um, long story short, um good for a john dory just quietly i've been told <laughs> um yeah so we went on a, a pre-season camp before as you do sort of mm. a team building thing and we've got a new facilities being built at, in heffron and mm. um so what we decided to do was basically take our history from redfern and uh, overnight to heffron and went to all the junior clubs uh throughout the night mm. and did challenges there listened to uh some old older sort of blokes heads around um the club that had played mm. for south sydney even um boys that who hadn't played for south sydney but um you know shared their i suppose liking to the club and how proud and mm. you know the history behind the club and um it was on the i think we covered about 35 40k overnight oh, no. carrying a big sort of heavy duty boxes mm. there was four teams and um yeah so it was on the second challenge so the second field we got there it was a Good old stretcher carry race mm. with all four teams. Oh, and, wow. Uh, basically, we had to go up 100 metres twice and there was eight people. So mm. first set of four went and then second set of four went. And I think one of the teams won and they got to sit out, but mm. all three of us had to go again. Mm. Um, on the second race, I, th I sort of figured things out and knew that if you won, uh, you were to sit out. Yep. So I went probably a bit too hard, went up, back, and on the second up, back, Got, went up the 100, come back about 40 metres, and my hammy went bang. Um, and you felt, felt that go. twinge? Like, yeah, yeah. Grade, grade two tendon and ended up oh. being. Um, ended up finishing the the whole camp, mm. uh, walked with it. We end up start, we started running towards the end because everyone was probably over it. Yeah, just which to get it done. It actually pissed me off because I could feel my hammy, and my roomie actually, Liam Knight, throughout the camp, kept pushing me, and I was like, bro, my, my hammy's actually <laughs> – it's not feeling well and he was in my team too and <laughs> yeah he was obviously off it and everyone started to get tired and whatnot yeah. but pre-season i'm back now training fully with the boys it's been good obviously hot and mm. you know what pre-season's about it's that time of year that no one likes but you just got to get through it yeah it's interesting i was speaking to one of the other boys the other day uh toby rudolph and um, oh, that was good chat i uh, could imagine oh that. great chat he always brings great chat um but we're speaking about pre-season and like when you first come in when you're like 18 19 you every day you wake up and you go why me why do i have to do this whereas like as you get older you realize you've just got to accept it's going to be miserable like just yeah. accept it life's shit at the moment yeah absolutely i think pre-season even though it's hard mm. it is it, it does get easier as the years go on yeah for sure I suppose your body gets used to it mm. I remember coming in as a young kid, it, it was definitely hard to get up in the mornings and 
Um, but I suppose what get you, get you through is, you know, we're lucky that we've got a lot of people around us and mm. uh, we've got a pretty good gr- crew at this club. Mm. And Imagine being f- a boxer, bro. Oh, Doing it by yourself. Yeah, that's a, that, a tennis, tennis, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a lonely place, I feel, oh. especially, say, being a m- boxing mixed mm. martial artist. Mm. Be a lonely place. Yeah. Because the boys get you through it. Like, Absolutely. Like, the, you know, you might have a down day, you walk in and one of the boys has done something fucking stupid on the weekend and all of a sudden you're buzzing again, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's what gets you through. That's why you play footy too as your teammates. Oh, bloody oath, bloody oath. Uh, and so, you know, basically heading into this year, every you're, you're full training now, like full pace, full everything? Yeah, back at it now. Mm. Um, so, yeah, back at it, back full training. Um, it's exciting. The season's almost around the corner. I think mm. everyone's... A bit bored at the moment, yeah. uh, a bit miserable as you are sort of this time of year. Trials mm-hmm. are coming up, uh, Charity Shield on the 18th of Feb. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting and finally back into it and mm. into the, you know, the exciting time of the year. Um, has there any been young fellas, any young fellas that have been <coughs> impressive in the preseason? Yeah, I definitely think so. There's uh, you, it's probably sp- you know, more sort of specific position wise mm. um that i've sort of noticed benny love it mm. he's a young back rower coming through yep. um a country kid tough um you know does his job and can be aggressive mm. uh and there's a, another young kid talus uh talus duncan is he named after gordon talus <laughs> well, i don't know that's a good question <laughs> but he, he's very similar mm. a young kid hard worker um <coughs> loves to get into the thick of things doesn't care who you are um or what you've done yeah, he's he loves he's it. got absolute filth in him and that's what i love about him <laughs> they're both very good young kids very yeah. respectful on that yeah. um i remember in the trial last year for the young boys in cairns against the cowboys tell us he, he got a very he got a bit chirpy and was into them and oh really yeah uh, kind of he he definitely earned my respect there because he just <laughs> he didn't care who it was or who you were yeah he was uh, he was coming for you mate how good how good um so take us back to a young fella uh obviously grew up on the goldie yeah, Goldie boy. Hey, where were you born in the Goldie? Born in the Goldie. I was actually, I was born down here. I was born in Western Sydney. Don't say that, yeah, bro. I know, I know. Yuck. Well, you can't choose where you're born, but <laughs> I moved up to the Goldie when I was about three or four. Okay. So, so through and through then. Yeah, through and through Queenslander. Um, spent my, spent my, obviously my whole time up through high school. Mm. There, went to Palm Beach State School, primary school in yep. Keeper Park mm. High School. And uh, it was a week after I finished high school, I moved to Brisbane to um, you know, start my sort of 20s, under 20s journey up there. Oh, so you and, missed schoolies? Uh, I did actually. Uh, that's a lie. I went there a couple of days. <laughs> I did go there a couple of days. We were actually mid, mid pre-season there or start of pre-season and I remember our coach didn't want us to go to schoolies. Mm. Uh, sorry, Hodjo. I'm uh, pretty sure... Oh, not pretty sure. I'm certain <laughs> I'm certain a few of us boys made the, made the trip down. Yeah. Um, started my journey there and you know, eventually made my way, yeah, to being a bloody a long journey but an exciting one. Yep. And so as a young fella, was it always rugby league or was it did you play other sports? I did play other sports. So over summer I played cricket. Mm. Uh did nippers as you know, sort of if you live on a a coast, mm. you do the nippers. I'm sure yep. everyone's done that and <laughs> I'm country. Um, I'm from the Gold Coast, but I'm country, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. in a way, I suppose. <laughs> um, coastal, and then uh, I'm trying to think back. I'm not good with memory, but I definitely did nippers, cricket, uh, but footy was definitely a main thing. And yeah. as I got older and things got harder, and uh, footy sort of takes its toll, uh, especially when you you're a young kid, you mm. sort of try and do as much as you can, and and the yeah. trainings and that, and especially when you're playing club and school footy, so. Mm. Uh, I sort of had to make my choice maybe when I was around 15, 16 and yeah. uh, gave nippers up pretty pretty early. Would have mm. been 11, 12-ish. Mm. Uh, and cricket, I was roughly the same. and um, Footy all the way through. Pretty rugby league-based family. Mm. And Who was your team uh, growing up? Tigers. No way. Yes, Tigers, yeah. I uh, got a lot of family that go for <laughs> South though. So it's funny how things work out. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of family that supports South, so, which definitely so helps. Was your family Balmain or because it would have been? Uh, my my pot was Western Suburbs Magpies. Okay, okay. Um, love Tommy Radonikus. Yep. Um, the old man was Balmain mm. to through the West Tigers. So going yep. back a fair bit of uh, history there, and and yeah, 
Wow, the West Tigers, eh? Um, weird, okay. weird, eh? Weird choice. That, yeah, well, it makes sense, though, because, like, you grew up Fairfield. All you were born in Fairfield, so I guess that kind of... Yeah, I guess so. It adds up a little bit. Um, so, so when you were growing up, were you making the Queensland sides from a young age, or did it take... Were you struggling to... I guess, were you a late bloomer? Yeah, I was uh, pretty fortunate. I'd... Um, yeah, look, I played under-12s Queensland... Mm. Uh, 15s, 18s, 20s, yep. residents and origin. Oh, wow. So um, all the way through. Yeah, all the way through. And I think I remember when I was I first got picked to play origin. Mm. Uh, I correct. I don't know if someone correct could correct me if I was wrong, but I think I was the, the first person to play 16s origin, um, 18s origin, 20s origin, residents, and then to state of origin, yeah, the first wow. person to ever do that. No way. Which um, that was probably just one of those stupid stats yeah. that someone's come up with, mm. and all the people behind the technical technical stuff. But I think that's you know something that um, I've sort of thought about and yeah. kept, and yeah, you know, pretty proud of myself that I've been oh, able absolutely. to do that growing up, and yeah. very fortunate the position you know that I've been in, mm. um, you know, the help throughout my journey, and that's um, you know, there's obviously a lot of people that have been involved throughout my journey as a young kid and mm. very uh, lucky that I've been able to do that. It's interesting because a lot of people listening or some people listening may think, well, of course, like, you know, if you're a gun when you're 12 and you're in the system, then maybe that is a like a, a correct pathway. But you'd know better than anyone, the amount of people that are good when they're 12, hit 16, they drop off. Yep. And then there's big 16 year olds, they get to 18, they drop off. Then there's even 18 year olds, they get to men and then they drop off. So it actually, yeah. a lot of people fall away. Yeah, absolutely. And I was never the most talented or mm. um, never the most skillful, but um, I, I think it sort of more comes down to like, I love the game. Oh, sorry, I still do. I love the game. Mm. And, um, I'm a big believer of, and I know for a fact, this will be the time that I sort of hang the boots up. Mm is the day I play rugby league for money mm. um, and it ends up being a chore mm. or something like that, that's the day I'll hang the boots up. Like I yeah. play the game. Obviously I'm very grateful that I, I'm, I'm able to do what I do and get paid as my job every mm. single day. But I feel as though if, if I'm only gonna play this game for money, that's the day I'll retire. Yeah. Um, I still love this game. I, I'll definitely wanna be around it for the rest of my life. and um it's something that i love doing and mm. and i'll always love doing especially as a kid growing up um i look back to you know when i was a kid how much i enjoyed the game obviously you have those days when you wake up going into pre-season yeah. you know you're getting towed up but yeah. um i always look back to when i was a kid and and um look back to the reasons of why i love this game and you know that's sort of what motivates me mm. as a player and not only as a pa player but as a person as well mm. it's it's really interesting you say that because I felt like the reason why, you know, I had all the talent to be, you know, what I wanted to be in the NRL, but I felt like my biggest issue was, I don't know if I loved playing it as yeah. much as some other guys. And I always used to question myself, like, would you play local league if you weren't playing NRL? And, and my answer was probably no. Yeah. And so I look back on my career and I go, that love for the game, if you want to be one of the better players and play origin and all that kind of stuff, you've got to be out like you speak okay you speak like smithy or slater and these the, i mean the goats like they froth it like absolutely absolutely froth it um and so it's it's great to hear that you like uh, i'd assume that if you weren't playing nrl you'd be playing local league yeah i've actually said that like mm. you in years to come i don't know how my body's going to hold up or mm. where, where my body's going to be but in my mind at the moment um yeah i feel as though i'll end up back on the gold coast so mm to live after my career at the moment at this moment in time i love sydney don't yeah. get me wrong like god knows what happens in say hopefully when mm. i'm 33 34 they'll <laughs> yeah. be good depending yeah. on the body yeah but i do love sydney and um god knows what happens but i do see myself living on the gold coast mm. um where do you reckon you'll end up on the goldie oh burley burley for sure hey uh, how good uh, is it got a property up there that's yeah. just it's waiting for me it's I'm ready to so, <laughs> gold yeah, coast it is. is heaven bro yeah home's home home's home that's for sure yeah um don't get me wrong as i said at this point in my time in in my life i love sydney yeah it's the best the eastern suburbs bronte boy with liam knight oh, shout out to Nighty. Yuck. so rotten um <laughs> yous would be so rotten together but i did say that after i finish my career for 12 months i'm going to go back to my junior club the burley bears and yeah uh play one year at a grade there reserve reserve grade 
um, yeah, I suppose to give back to the, to I suppose a club that's definitely given me so much. Mm. Um, you know, I played all my juniors there from under sevens up till under seventeens before I made my way up to Brisbane. And mm. um, yeah, I want to not only give back to the club but to the community as well. And mm. um, yeah, just sort of remember where I've where I've come from and. Mm. Um, you know, I, try, I suppose try and stay as humble as I can in mm. that sense. Yeah, mate, the Goldie, absolute heaven on earth. Did you so? What a place, Burley Pav. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, uh, oh, the Burley Pav. I actually haven't had a, I haven't got like had a drink there yet. Like, I mean, I've had a beer there, but I mean, like, yeah. drink, drink. Yeah. But when I see the pictures, then I'm like, there's like, it doesn't get better than that. Like, you could go anywhere in the world and tell me that you're going to get a better view than that with such no, a good establishment. Absolutely, right on the beach. Oh. Uh, then you got just, the hill there as well. Yeah, it's just everything there. Yeah. It's it's honestly unreal. Um, I went up there last week or week before or whatever to do some like I had Brimo on that on the podcast. Uh, I'm sure he would have brought it up. Uh, yeah, well, mate, he loves it. He loves. It. He's a, he's the kid. he reckons he's the prince of Burley. The prince of Burley. That's, he lives in Palm. He calls himself the prince of Palmy Burley. Mate, carry on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So arrogant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so. Like I hadn't been back to the Goldie in like at least a year, maybe even longer. Oh, not a year, eight months or so. And going for a run along the beach there, like Burley all the way down, it's just you can't beat it. Like Mate, you honestly can't. It's just oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Okay, so as a young fella, you're coming through, and the t- the Titans would have been, you know, definitely in the comp by then. They would have been since yep, 2008. They definitely, were, yeah. so definitely in the comp by then. Was you know going up to Brisbane. What made that? How did you make that decision? And were there other clubs interested? So, when was it? I signed my well, not it wasn't a contract, but I was in the de- development squad. Sorry, after a carnival in Mackay with the Broncos, I signed a little thing, and they approached my mum and dad. Obviously, mm. back then I didn't have a manager, and um, up until I was fifteen, I was in that development squad, and then they offered me. You know, my first little contract, $1,000 a year. Yeah. Uh, two years, I think it was. And um, it was at that point in time that um, I had to sort of get a manager to, mm. I suppose, look over those things and ended up getting a manager, Clint Zammett, um, at that time. And um, he, obviously him having to sign young kids, he knew about development squads and where... Uh, he thought was best for you know to develop as a as a young kid a, a, into a player, mm. and he said the Broncos was the you know at that time was the best development. Um, it, it was close to home. Mm. They were good at developing kids, and that's something that they prided themselves in. Mm. So he told me that he he wanted me to stay there. I had, I had a little bit in, bit of interest. Sorry, when I was fifteen from the Tigers, mm. um, the, oh, Titans, really? the Titans. Um, because like with, with the Titans, like the amount of young Gold Coast boys that the Titans don't seem to be able to grab, it's crazy. Like you got Darius, Steve Michael, who's on Gold Coast, your Gold Coast. There's like Benny Hannett. Like, do you know what I mean? It's quite quite a lot that they just yeah. somehow mi- just miss kind of thing. Was, yeah, I feel like that was definitely early days. Mm. Um, but I feel like they are getting better at that, yeah. wanting to support their local kids and, and try and get the best talent around the Gold Coast, which I think is great. And yeah. Um, there's just so many factors in rugby league that you you got to sort of take in, in the sense that um, you know it, it's it's hard to keep everyone. Yeah, and um, also like Brisbane during that period, it's Bris- like they made the grand final in 2015. Brisbane Broncos. Yeah, yeah. So it's so hard to quality, compete. Yeah, the yeah. quality side they've been around for so long, mm. won so many premierships. Mm. Uh, Wayne Bennett was definitely a factor. Yeah, massive. Um, massive. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, my manager just told me I want you to stay with them and mm. I ended up did and um, yeah, found myself up there as a, as a young kid learning and um, as you do going through life, you learn and yep. uh, you make mistakes along the way. Don't get me wrong, I'm probably one that's made a fair few mistakes but um, yeah, I definitely learn from them and yeah. yeah. And so you get up there and you're a part of the NYC site. Yep, so... From- First year, 2013. Yep. So first year out of school, you go and you're, you're training with just under 20s at this point. Yep. Uh, and then, so the so the first year, 2013, was it the second year that you went into first grade squad, 2014? Nah, so it was pretty late in that sense. Yeah. Um, 2000, my first 
full preseason mm. was 2015, leading into my debut year 2016. Yeah, okay. So that was my first full preseason. I did that um, one day a week in the 2015 season, mm. uh, but very that was only through preseason. Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah, my first full preseason was the end of 2015, uh, just after they made the grand final, leading into the yeah the 2016 season. And this is this was after the year that you uh, named Lock of the Year in the NYC. Yeah, 2015. Team. And yep. so was that a was that a real like you get named Lock of the Year, you you know you're in the Broncos system. Was that a real moment of like wow, like I'm I'm on the path to maybe playing in a kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think going into my first full preseason, I had no expectations to play um, play NRL. Mm. I was twenty, turning twenty one, and you know I had no high expectations. But I knew if I I stuck to it, trained hard, worked my ass off, played well throughout the year, then you know Wayne might have noticed me. Mm. Uh, it's pretty daunting as a young kid going into such a you know high caliber side at that time uh, with the likes of. Corey Parker, Sammy Thide, Jillo, um, Jillo mm. Moose, yeah. uh, Benny Hunt, <laughs> Andrew Hullock. McCulloch, yeah. Darbs. Yeah. Um, Hodjo. Ho, uh, Hodjo had retired 2015. Oh, 20, yeah, okay, yep. Yeah, Apologies, yep. You know, but even the sense of that um, yeah. and Wayne Bennett as your coach, it's yeah, it was pretty daunting, but mm. you know, I just had to keep my, my mouth shut, train hard, and and hopefully that, um, you know, the coaches and um, the boys – hopefully noticed that and mm. um, I was yeah very lucky enough I made my way into that side um, round round 10 I'm pretty sure a double header against Manly oh wow yeah. Manly double header um, is there any when you rocked up to your first full preseason was there any session or moment or time where you're like this is like full on like realizing the fact that you can do under twenties preseasons, and they're tough. They're not easy at yeah, all. Absolutely, but they're not first grade preseasons. No. no Was there way. any session or any player that stood out to you where you're like, "Wow, he's the standard" kind of thing? I'm definitely going to say that it was the physicality of training. Mm. Uh, mm. I sort of remember say doing a pose and and doing that against. I suppose you could call them the big boys, and I thought to myself, "Yeah, wow, well, mm. uh, this is definitely a step up to what I'm used to. I, I hadn't trained really or." played with men mm. hadn't even played queensland cup up until that point yeah wow. uh that was my first year of q cup and nrl wow. it was a 2016 season so yeah. i hadn't experienced the the playing with men yeah. part especially which, in the forwards there yeah especially in the middle mm. that doesn't got <laughs> it, it puts fear into you yeah uh you'd be lying if you didn't say it put a little bit of fear into me mm. uh you know where i was doing a pose against the big boys and i thought to myself yeah this is definitely a step up and yeah i'm with the big boys now it's either um put your ass down and, and do your best or you'll get found out and yeah on your way mm. is there any um any player in that squad that really took you under their wing and helped you out and taught you you know all the little things that it, you can only be learnt by someone else kind of showing you um it's hard to nail it down to one with such an experienced pack. Now, I forgot to mention Adam Blair there. Yeah. Adam Blair was another one. Uh, he was unreal. Mm. He was he, he was actually, you know, always sort of had me doing extras. Koza, Moose, they all were Jillo. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, they were just Alex Glenn. Yeah, Lexi. Lexi. Yeah. Mate, it was a proper good experienced crew there. They were always willing to help the younger boys. And, and they set such a high standard too. Yeah, absolutely. So... Oh, I'm very lucky and grateful that I, I was a part of that, and mm. you know, those boys have definitely had a, a big impact on, you know, where I am today. And mm. I'm 27 years of age now, and um, I'm 120 odd games into my first grade career. So I guess I'm starting to get to that point in time where you know, I'm turning into that leader and mm. um, trying to do that as best I can and, and help these younger boys coming through because. Even though young boys, I feel like now are, are fearless and they don't give a shit. Yeah, um, they're they're happy to take you on, take on the old boys. So yeah. uh, hats off to them. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I do want to guide. I suppose these younger boys and um, you know, we've spoken about at our club about leaving the club in a better place than it than it was um, when you leave this club. So yeah, that's something that I want to do and and I suppose guide these young boys in the right direction. Mm. And uh, so that 2016 season, you also, you know, you play for North Devils, 
and you made the Queensland resident side. Do you remember that Queensland residents game at all? Yeah, I do. V- vividly. I remember it was a stinking hot day at Langlands Park. Yep. Uh, during the day, um, we got pumped. We got bashed. They absolutely bashed the crap out of us, New South Wales. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> they won pretty convincingly. Mm. Uh, but I do remember getting plays player. Yeah. Uh, for that game, obviously, in a losing side. Mm. Losing, obviously, no one likes losing, but um, you know, winning a play a players player award that's a pretty good, pretty cool feeling, and I think um, that's the one that you want to win. Mm. Um, you know, being, I feel like as a player, I've always wanted to be a player that isn't noticed for say the tries, tries, this, even though I'm not. <laughs> uh, very find it very hard to score <laughs> uh, but I, I've always wanted to be a player that everyone's wanted to play with and is aggressive and um, will always be there for my teammate no matter the circumstance so um, you know the players player award I remember winning that so that was pretty yeah. special to me um, okay so that season obviously you make your debut against Manly yeah how did it come about <sighs> kind of funny story I think I told this the first time I was on the podcast but I was in the car and I was in the passenger seat I'd flick through, I was flicking through Instagram and I saw ins and outs on the Broncos mm. um, page and it was a photo of me and it was an ins and outs thing. And um, as soon as I like sort of went to go on the link to see the team, mm. uh, Scotty Sislowski had called me and I answered and he goes, hey mate, I don't know if you know yet, but you're going to make your debut this week. And I just went, what the fuck? <laughs> Started wigging out, young kid. Yeah. Um, so I panicked and Wayne hadn't called me, but I remember walking in that morning. <laughs> I didn't know if I was playing oh, or not. no. Because obviously I hadn't heard it from the um, coach's yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah. And, and you might be 18th man or something. Yeah. Or something weird like that, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I assumed. Yeah. And Scotty had told me I'd, I was playing and I just went... Well, I don't really want to get my hopes up and yeah. believe it until it's actually happened. For sure. Walked into training and I think one of the assistant coaches had told me to come up to the meeting. And I went, okay, sweet. So walked in, walked into the meeting room and Wayne started speaking, going on about maybe, I can't remember what he was going on about, but then he went, oh yeah, forgot to uh, tell you boys, but <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe will be making his debut this week. I, I thought I was gonna I was gonna give him a call yesterday, yesterday, but I thought fuck him, I'll let him find out for himself. <laughs> so then, um, yeah, I'd obviously found out that I played and yeah, yeah. got to call my family <laughs> and and your friends and got to let everyone know I was making my debut. But that's probably one of the the one of many funny stories I have of Wayne is. Yeah, he, he was going to give me a call, but he thought, fuck him, I'll surprise him. Um, Imagine telling your you, you kid that in the future. Yeah, the coach just said, fuck him, I'm find out himself. It honestly couldn't have worked out any better for mm. me. Oh, actually, it doesn't ha- a coach doesn't, isn't, um, you know, you see these days where coaches pull, um, pull the, say, the player into the office and they're videotaping yeah. it. But I thought it was pretty unique that yeah, man. You know, Wayno, Wayno gave me that, that treatment and oh, I loved that. I actually loved it. It was probably, it couldn't have gone any better and um, mm. I'm glad that's the way it went. And, yeah. Uh, I think it's, yeah. A, it's a really cool way for sure, for sure. Because like I, I don't, mine, I think I just got names. Like, so there was no like moment. Yeah. It was just like, oh, it was a moment for me. Don't get me wrong. Fuck. Yeah. moment for me. But it was more just like, oh, it's a natural progression. Like I'm next in line. I'm playing good footy. Whereas like the whole scrolling thing, thing, oh, so that's that's mad, bro. It's so good. I didn't even so I didn't even <coughs> really have a jersey presentation either. Yeah, okay. So I rocked up. I don't up think to they the, used to do them as much. Yeah, no, they did, and 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 I definitely didn't care or yeah, didn't don't care. care but yeah. uh, what was pretty cool was I, I remember walking in and my debut jersey was there, and you look at your uh, it says your name, your number, uh, your playing number, your who you're playing, and what the date was, mm. and. You know, say what game it was. It was obviously my NRL debut. Yeah. But I do remember after the game, um, that's when Wayne congratulated me, just saying, you know, let's give a round of applause uh, for Jai. He's just made his NRL debut and you guys mm. have made that so special for him, obviously, because we won. So mm. uh, definitely a moment you always remember. Oh, absolutely. Is there, is there a part of like a, something that Wayne does as a coach that may p- surprise people or a story about him that's, uh, that obviously that you can tell um, that people would be interested in? I just think the the care he has for his players mm. 
Um, he doesn't expect you – he doesn't – sorry. He obviously expects you to be your best week in and week out mm. on the training paddock, but he just – he doesn't expect you to be a, someone you're not. Mm. And there's obviously a lot of different positions on the field and he just wants you to be the best possible person you can be um, every day. He, he doesn't expect – um too much from you as i said and he's actually quite funny mm. um i'm sure a lot of people have said this loves a joke loves a laugh he just cares so much for his players and um you know, i'm so i suppose so privileged and honored that i think have been i think i've been coached by one of if not the best coach that's ever coached the game mm. so it's a very surreal feeling that yeah, I've been co I've been coached by a Big Wayno, so yeah. two times too. Very grateful, yeah, twice, yeah. two different clubs. Um, yeah, he followed you around, bro. No, I followed him. <laughs> I followed uh, him. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, that that debut is there anything you specifically remember from the game? Bit of a blur the whole day yeah, yeah. leading up to it, but uh, I do remember walking in, seeing my jersey, um, and I was actually because. You know, growing up and that, you never have had warm-up shirts. Yeah. And obviously, when you come into the NRL, you got your warm-up shirts. That's weird. You got all of the above. Yeah. Um, and I seen, you know, I'd always been used to wearing my jersey going yeah. out to warm-up. I didn't like warm-up shirts. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't know what to do. And I saw the boys wearing their warm-up shirts and I panicked and wore my warm-up shirt. Yeah. Uh, I had nothing on the back yet, obviously, because I hadn't played. Yeah. I remember, remember running out to go and... Um, go and warm up and there was a game on before us mm. uh, i can't remember who it might have been the titans in melbourne mm. and i remember running out and suncourt was packed and i just went wow i'm, yeah. I'm on the big stage yeah i'm on the big stage yeah and running out massive crowd obviously it was mainly his home game but um we were at suncorp so i don't know how that worked yeah it was mainly his actual home game we were in the under 20 sheds actually so it was kind of like home which kept me Kind of kept me, you know, sure. yeah, felt, I felt safe mm. in that sense because I'd been in those sheds all the yep. time. Um, remember running out and just going, wow, I'm in the big time, warmed up. And all I remember was coming on and, and we'd scored and um, there wasn't, can't really remember too much of the game, but I do remember running on, we scored and I remember <coughs> Dubs and Semi thought it, it just, you know, mate, you're here for a reason. Yeah. Uh, just, just be yourself, play the way you've been playing in Queensland Cup and you'll be right. Yeah. Mate, what an experience. What an experience. Okay, so that year, how many games do you play? The whole season then? 12. 12. And what round was that? That was round 10. Round so, 10. so essentially the rest of the year. Mm. Essentially, like like because obviously round 22 would be when you... Were you left out of the side due to injury or was it just like... So back? I can't vaguely remember that, you know, the next week because I did play because I think it was Lexi got injured. Yeah, okay. So I'd come onto the bench and then... I think he was back the next week mm. um and i was sent back down to yeah yeah back to norse and then uh, i don't know if this i'm pretty sure it's right but the boys had just had a loss and um obviously it wasn't a crisis meeting or a panic button but mm. then i remember steve kearney come down and said hey Jai, as wayne told you um that you'll be you know, possibly playing this week. Mm. And I was like, oh, he goes, I want you to come up to the meeting. Went up to the meeting and it went from, he named me, I think in the 19 jersey to I started. Oh, wow. It started in the middle. Wow. Uh, against South, who were a big pack at that time. Oh, mate. 100%. The Burgess brothers, Burgess, yeah. Yeah. Semi. Um, ended up playing, I think, 60 odd minutes in the middle <laughs> um, as a young kid. So that yeah. was definitely fearful. Yeah. And I think from there on, um, yeah, I just, I started, off, ended up starting off the bench and playing in my first final series in my first year. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, mate. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the following year, leading into 2017, are you feeling much more confident and like, you're not, you're not a full first grader yet, yeah. but you're getting there kind of thing. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, obviously getting to know those boys and, um being able to play with them throughout the year mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then mad monday comes and you have a beer and you sort of get to know them more and uh i definitely felt more a part of the team not that mm -hmm. not not that not saying that i didn't at the start but yep. as a young kid you're very daunted but 
uh, felt definitely more a part of that team in, in 2017 and um, went over to England for the World Cup Challenge against Warrington. Yep. That was a cool experience. Yeah. Uh, I was freezing cold, but I started round one up until I can't remember what round it was, but Cody Nicarima had just done his shoulder. Mm. Uh, sorry, he had surgery over the preseason and um, was sort of coming back and boys were playing pretty good uh, that were on the bench. So I dropped back to Norse thinking around five or six, six, I'm pretty sure, mm. and done my thumb. So I done my thumb um, the first game back in Q Cup. So I had to get surgery on that, which put me out for six weeks. And yeah. I ended. I think I ended up playing, again, 12 games okay. that year as you, well in 2017. And you signed with the Titans that year too? Yeah, yeah. That was the year I signed my um, three-year deal with the Titans. Yeah. I remember having to walk in into Wayne's office and telling him I didn't want to, but obviously I had to. Yeah. I wanted to be as honest as I could because that's one thing Wayne is very good at is mm. being honest with his players. Um, so I wanted to have that suppose that tough chat that no one wants to have, but I had to have it. Mm. And I remember walking into his office, office absolutely shitting myself, telling mm. him that I was going, I hadn't signed then, but I wanted to let him know before, before I signed, signed for sure. to show him the respect and do the right thing mm. uh, that I was going to sign with another club, which was the Titans. And he mm. said, mate, I didn't know how it was going to go, hey, because you know, rugby league can be, be yeah. a pretty ruthless so industry. Had Broncos offered you something, it just wasn't close yep. to what the Titans are offering? Oh, it's not that it wasn't close. The Broncos had offered me a two-year deal. Yeah. Uh, Titans three-year deal. That obviously was a factor, yeah. but I had, to take, yeah, I had to take into account that how good the squad was at the Broncos. And um, I'd sort of been told by the Titans that there's a starting role here if you have a, obviously nothing's promised but yeah. if you come down there's a there's a starting role for you here if you have a good preseason you trial well and yeah um, we can we can not promise you that opportunity but we can it's yours to lose kind yeah, of yeah there's there's yours it's yours to lose and we think you'll be a great fit here yeah. you're a Gold Coast boy a Gold Coast junior we want to bring you home mm. um, had that chat and yeah ended up making my way back How down the M1 take it with you like Nah, mate, he was unreal. Mm. Uh, it went the total opposite way to the to what I thought it would be. Okay, and it's funny how things work out. He said to me, "Mate, go if there's that opportunity down for you. You got a three year deal, uh, a starting spot potentially, um, but just always remember that I want to get you back one day." Yeah, wow. and a few years went on, and um, you know, Jason Demetrio was the assistant coach. JD was the assistant coach in 2017 under Wayne, and. Yeah. Ended up getting a phone call from both of them um, when negotiations were going on with myself and my manager. Wow, crazy. I want to get you back and he got you back now. But you get down to the Titans um, and like I feel, you know, this is really where you springboarded your career into yeah. obviously played Origin during that period, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. And just like, I guess, put yourself on the map as one of the, the better uh, forwards in the game. What was your time like down to the Titans? It was unreal. Um, the playing side of it probably hurt a bit, mm. especially it being my hometown and where I'm from. And, um, you know, we didn't succeed as much. No, the year before, 2017, they made the finals. Mm. And I, re I saw a real opportunity to build that club up to, you know, a, a potential premiership threat. Mm. And I remember going down and I was excited uh, with the plays we had and um, it obviously signed Breno as well as a new coach and obviously had that drama as well that went on there but I wasn't a part of that and mm. don't know how that sort of so what's uh, Neil out. Brennan got re got signed and yep. who was the coach before Neil Henry Neil Henry okay. yeah um, and Neil was the coach at that time and then he obviously all that stuff had happened in Breno and I, I didn't know a thing about Breno yep. or 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 anything and um once again i sort of was at square not at square one but i knew i had to work my ass off to to get into that yeah. starting side he might not rate you. He might yeah exactly mm -hmm. exactly so there's a lot of factors there's a lot of nervousness mm -hmm. there's a lot of you know you're unsure of of what's going to happen and um i, I will say that i worked my ass off throughout that preseason and mm -hmm. put myself in the best possible chance to you know, earn a starting spot i do remember starting in the big number i was number eight there you go number no, eight no 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 number 10 i'm pretty sure number 10 eh? no i started number 10 against canberra so in the front row it, what, what's your favorite position because i 
I've always been torn on what I feel like your position is. Like, yeah, so am I at the moment. Like, you know, like there was a period there where you were a great lock. You got through so much fucking work. Um, then sometimes on the edge, but then also, you know, your, your motor's good in the middle. What, what do you reckon it is? I've played middle my whole life growing up. Okay. Um, so I do feel like in the middle, but I did enjoy the challenge in the back row last year. Mm. Uh, obviously through injury and that, um, I had to play a lot more back row um, due to the injuries to Hosty and Cheeks, mm. Cheekem. And um, I enjoyed that challenge. It was a new sort of role for me. I was playing on the left edge yeah, <laughs> with, yeah. with Cody, <laughs> Trell. Um, yeah, I thought Isaiah Tass had a, had a great year yeah, last year, yeah. a breakout year, and Alex Johnson. So yeah. um, it made my job sort of a different challenge, but a, an exciting <laughs> challenge as well that I got to play a new position and um, definitely takes a sting out of the game playing on the edge at the start. But mm. I do love the physicality of the game and definitely love the middle. So Okay, okay. Um, um, anyway, so you're at the Titans and it's just, you know, it's a tough, tough few years, a really tough few, few years. 2019 um you know you finish you finish last in 2019 and at this point i guess you know you've got other clubs interested um you make your when you make sorry you make your we'll go to your debut for queensland first actually so 2018 you make your queensland debut do you remember the phone call how did that happen yeah i i remember that that's something that i'll always remember mm. kevy called me i was at my you know my best mates mum and dad's house and I knew Origins, there was talk in the media that I was a smoky or mm. uh, I was a chance. And I'm not one to read into that or nor did I let it worry me. Um, but I remember I was at my best mate's mum and dad's house. I was in like a room watching a movie mm. with my mate and I met Kevy uh, through the, what is it? The, QAS squad at the start of the year that they picked, you know, for boys who haven't, hadn't like emerging, played Origin, yeah, Emerging Origin yeah. Camp, that's it. And his name popped up on my phone and to be honest, my first thought was he wanted me to come into camp and um, I suppose get around it and answered and he told me that I'd be playing and I didn't know what to do to be honest. I was just, yeah, hey mate, like, thank you. Yeah. D obviously want to yell and scream but i yeah, couldn't yeah and then i hung up and went to call my old man and i couldn't really i couldn't he answered and i couldn't talk oh wow so i hung up and just broke down ball of my eyes out no way. You know, thinking i think back to where i've come from as a young kid the hard work that i put in not only you know through the 20 sister but even at high school we got absolutely towed up yeah um it's proper sister pbc yeah, Kibra. Kibra, sorry. My bad. You went to Palm Beach State School, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Primary school. So, Kibra. Kibra and PBC, though, yeah. like, they're like proper systems. Like actual. Actual systems. I remember in uh, term four, so there's no footy there. It's like our preseason in a way, term four. Mm. We were doing every Friday morning. It was like 8K runs. Yeah, wow. Uh, down at the main beach. It was from That's the cool. spit all the way to. Um, no, sorry. From main beach, beach. All the way to the spit and mm. back, which and is that's, about an eight k run. And that's including your training as well during that's the week. In, yeah, including the training during the week. So you're what you're looking at what at minimum three session big sessions yeah, a week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then you um, play on the weekend as well. Gym in the morning, six a.m. sometimes. Wow. Um, but so it's like a almost a little bit of a lesser version than twenties. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I remember thinking back to so much hard work that I'd put in. It just felt like it was all worth it at that point in time. I broke down in tears. I mm. uh, couldn't talk. And then, you know, once I pulled myself together, I finally got to make those phone calls. Yeah. Uh, my mum didn't believe me. No way. Uh, she <laughs> didn't believe me. She Have didn't you cried wolf a few times? Is that yeah. why? Yeah. <laughs> she, nah, nah. I haven't lied about anything. But <laughs> she honestly said to me, you're kidding. Like, there's no way. They, they, <laughs> they wouldn't pick you. They were her words. <laughs> so I was like, no, I actually am. And she obviously was stoked. And my old man was pretty happy as well. So yep. very surreal feeling and um, something that I hold on to for the rest of my life.
do you know what movie you're watching? Do you remember? No, I don't remember that. I just remember his name popping up and just breaking down out in the synthetic grass. It's probably like Titanic or something, I reckon. Yeah. So Marley and Me, anyone seen that? Yeah, it fucks you up. My proper. Honestly, it's like a horror movie. because So I was already crying, I'll say. <laughs> yeah, 100% from the, the dog. Uh, oh, actually, spoiler alert. Dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, surely everyone's seen it now. The dog fucking goes, bro. Um, if you ever bring up like a, an, a pet movie, and say, oh, it's super sad. You already know that something yeah, happens 100%. to the pet. Like, who gives a fuck about the people in the movie? Hey, what's it, Hachi? You said that one? Hachi? Yeah. Crazy. Horrible. Horrible. Absolutely. Like, honestly, Good movies, it's like, but just horrible. It's like it. a horror movie. It's like a bloke's horror movie. That's what it is. 100%. Um, okay, so, yeah, what do you remember from 2018? Is that... 2018, I'm trying to think. So, we... Queensland won 17? Yep. Won 18? No. Lost 18. Won yeah. 19. No, no, they, no one, they lost 18, 18 19, 19, 19, 19, 20. 20. Yeah, okay. So we went 17 under Kevy, then lost under Kevy, and then Kevy got the job? And or then, no, Kevy was up until 19. 19. Wayne, okay. 20. Oh, okay, sweet. Okay, so the first, 2018, what was that like? Do you remember anything from the game at all? Yeah, I do remember the game. Mm. Uh, not so much the whole game. That's... I feel like that's a very hard thing to remember oh, the game. It just it goes like that, yeah, especially yeah. in Origin with you how do so quick many and of them physical. As well. I do remember running out. There was mm. ninety odd thousand there at the MCG. Oh, it was oh, so ridiculous. Was at the MCG. Yeah, it was. It, that was pretty surreal. Mm. Um, but I probably the most vivid thing uh, that I remember was walking in and seeing Billy Slater, mm. Greg Inglis, and just going, "Yeah, this is this is." I thought I was with the big boys. Yeah. Now I'm proper with the big boys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so daunting throughout the week and it's a 10 day camp too. Mm. So it feels like the camp goes for ages, <laughs> especially I feel like in your debut. Mm. Um, as time went on, the more games I played, you know, camp was sort of easier and, yeah. uh, and whatnot. But my first sort of couple of years going into it, felt like camp would just go forever. Mm um because you just want to get to the game you're so excited yeah. that's all you want to do is run out yeah um so i do remember that part of it um and yeah the game not so much i do remember um grabbing the card knew when i was going on i knew it was going to be the second half and yeah ran on and become origin player 196 for queensland far out how incredible how incredible okay so We'll, st we'll stick, so 2018, you make your debut. Um, and then 2019, we'll talk, we'll stay on Origin. You guys lose that series again. And I guess, like, what's the feeling for you personally? Are you going, like, not concerned, but like, oh, like, this is, they've got a young side, they've got a you know, young half in Nathan Cleary, things are looking really good for New South Wales, or what, what's the feeling like in Kent? Uh, so 2019, I played on Friday against the Warriors. So we'd, we'd won game one. Mm. I was a part of that. And we played the Warriors on Friday and I completely ruptured my ankle, oh. uh, grade three syndesmosis. My God. The, and that was the Friday, the Monday we were going into camp for game two. Mm. So I'd obviously had to go and get surgery and thought I was a chance of making it for game three. <laughs> but my physio said, you, you're kidding yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. too too close and uh that was probably a bit of a, gu a gut-wrenching feeling um being able to be a part of a um, origin side it it's pretty special and you don't want to miss that and mm. um so i wasn't a part of game two and three but i went to game three and the way they lost you know, it was so heartbreaking mm. uh that try literally in the last minute yeah teddy um yeah teddy scored in the corner and <gasps> to win the game and he's had the momentum too like yeah, absolutely swung, swung it all the way back yeah yeah, it, it, it was. I remember Moose and Papali. Yeah, um, and I do remember um, Ethan Lowe having oh blinder, having, yeah, absolute One classic of great of an game. Yeah, kicking and everything, <laughs> kicking yeah. goals. What the fuck? It's it. Um, and I remember the the feeling after the game was you know, pretty gut wrenching. And mm. um, and as you said, the New South Wales team were young, had just won two series in a row. Were probably were full of confidence mm. and. Um, leading into 2020, the different circumstances in COVID hit. Yeah, uh, we were in a camp, which I think definitely helped us. Yeah, being around Wayne and yeah, yeah. knowing what he's like. Obviously, I don't know what the other camp would have been like, but um, 
Yeah, I definitely think that was an advantage, uh, advantage for us in 2020 because I know exactly – well, I was there in the camp, but I know what Wayne was would have been, was going to be like, and he yep. just brought everyone together. And it was such like, fun, so fun, like almost like circling the wagons to a degree. Like he got everyone under his reign, and he could control yeah, the environment. He thrives off that. He yeah. thrives off being around the boys. Yeah, um, and maybe, maybe a little. I don't know if the boys will kill me for this, but when we went up to the COVID bubble in on the gold coast yeah. and all teams were spread out from sunny coast brisbane and gold coast we yeah. were up on the gold coast <laughs> and we found out that all the partners were coming up <laughs> and it was the day um the partners were coming up and we walked in for it because we had training that day we walked into the meeting wayne just didn't seem right he seemed a little bit pissed off <laughs> and i honestly to this day think it was because all the partners were coming up <laughs> And he didn't want them there. Um, <laughs> he wanted the boys just to himself to be able to, no, no other distractions. But we were having so much fun in yeah. that environment. Yeah. Like, it's just what he, uh, Wayne thrives on, is just yeah. getting the boys all around. And we did. We, mate, it couldn't have worked out any better for us. Because like, yeah. we were such a tight group mm. and how good it actually went. You know, We yeah. obviously didn't get the result in 21, but you know, we went a, a fairly long way to the GF. Um, okay, so 2018, uh, sorry, 2019 is uh, when you sign a four-year deal with South Sydney. And like at the time... End of 2020, I'm pretty sure. To, so on December 24th, signed a four-year... No, yeah, 2019. It would have been, geez, that's right. Um, yeah, sorry. No, no, it's all good. And that's, and that's for 2021 season as well. Yeah. So way, way out. Mate, it feels like I've been here for years, that's it. Yeah, wow. Wow. And really, 2021, first year. Yeah. Yep. Which is crazy to think. But um, I think it's probably you signed that contract so far out. Yeah. There was talk of me coming here early, but the Gold Coast had said no. And I was, uh, my manager, you know, had said to me, do you, do you want to go down early? And I said, well, if I did say like, mate, I'm obviously happy to stay here. Um, probably going to contradict myself to you when I say, you know, I'm a loyal person. And mm. um, obviously I'd sign with another club, so I'm probably not too loyal there, but... Well, you're loyal to your contract. Like you yeah, absolutely. Contract, you finish and, it. and I said, mate, I'm a loyal person. If they need me and want me to stay here, I will. But, mm. you know, if they want me to go, I don't really want to put that in my hands because I feel as though that was sort of started a bit of bad blood between the club and I mm. when I didn't want to do that at all. Okay. Um, but the club had said, no, we want you to stay. And I said, sweet, look, I'll, I'll put my best foot forward to play the best possible footy I can for the Gold Coast. And that's my main focus this year. And, um, you know, Justin, Mal, they were very appreciative of that. And I'm mm. um, never one to kick stones or no matter the job that's ahead of me, I always put my best foot forward and, and do the best I can for my teammates. And, you know, I hate letting down my teammates as well. And I was, mm. I'd become really good mates with um, the boys at the Gold Coast and still am good mates with them yeah. uh, to this day. And so the, the signing with the Rabbitohs, you know, was it purely money? Was it because you felt that there's premierships there? Was it the fact that, you know, it's Titans were struggling and it's it's tough getting up each year? Was it career decision? You know what I mean? Like, it's I think a lot of people may, or some people may see players sign contracts and just immediately think, oh, it's just money. Like, it's purely about the finances. When a lot of the time you've got to weigh up, is this best for my career? Do I want to challenge myself? You know, is the coach going to be a you know, certain coach that I want to be with? What, what was the reasons for going to Rabbitohs? There it was definitely a lot of factors and the only reason the opportunity arose to go there was because Big Sammy had retired and they needed a middle forward mm. and I was coming off contract. Mm. And as I said, JD and both both JD and Wayne had called me and said, We want you down here. Yeah. We think we can you can do good down here. You know, you're a good person, even though probably majority of them would say I'm a Derek, but <laughs> um you know, you're a good person. We feel like you'd really get along with this crew. Mm. Um, and Wayne helped, JD helped. And be lying if I lying if I didn't say, you know, obviously you got to look after yourself and what's yeah. best for you. Mm. But the ultimate prize was obviously to win a premiership. And you look at that, st you still look at our side. It's, it's, there's so much talent there that, you know, I feel as though I could probably do it down here before it was up there. And that's mm. probably disrespectful. And I, I mean no disrespect in that. But mm. um, I just thought there was a, a massive opportunity 
um, for myself to to come down to a new place, get out of my comfort zone. I felt like I was comfortable at the Gold Coast. It's mm. home for me mm. as well. So I've just felt like I could get out of my comfort zone, come down to somewhere new where I reckon the only two for four people that I knew were Gags, Sua, Wayne and JD. Yeah, wow. Um, I didn't really know anyone coming down and not one to get homesick. That wasn't a factor for me, mm. but just the the sense that um, for me to get out of my comfort zone and to potentially win a comp, that was, um, you know, the deciding factors. And as a human being, I feel as though all you want to be, feel is to be wanted and South just refused to give up. Yeah, well. They refused to give up and that was a selling factor as well. Yeah. And probably one of the main factors just to be wanted by a club so badly that, I couldn't say no to him. Mm. I, I dead set couldn't say no to him. And I went, you know what? Stuff this. Like, I'm going to Sydney. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm going to Sydney. Wow. Because, like, you, you, when you say you were comfortable at the Gold Coast, like, it did seem like you had a great crew there that you got along with really well. Like, obviously, you weren't winning too many games on the footy field, but it did seem like, you know, you were one of the – probably their best player or at least one of their best players. Very easy to just go, you know what? Like, I can be one of the better players in a side – probably going to get offered a decent contract going forward i'd assume yeah, anyway. and i definitely was yeah. i was offered mate, more than more than decent uh okay so was the conversation with the titans tough when you went and said yeah i, I cried on the phone oh really <laughs> Fucking hell. man of many emotions uh, <laughs> yeah. i cried on the phone when i called justin to tell him that and i did the same thing as well i made sure that i hadn't signed the contract before i told yeah the coaching staff mal and justin um, so I'd made my decision. I, I knew what my heart wanted and I knew I wanted to go to South. So yeah. I made sure I made those phone calls before I'd signed the contract, which I did yeah. out of respect and, um, yeah, cried on the phone. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, as I said, you, you did love the playing at the Titans. It seemed like the playing group and you got oh, along absolutely. with it. Well. I, I loved it. Mm. I, mate, I'd become best mates with boys up there and so close to that group and, mm. It's very different now um, compared to you know, where the boys that are there now. So, um, but you know, yeah, Brimo, Brimo was there. Mm. Phil, Sammy, yeah, um, you know, two of my really good mates. Mm. Um, so, you know, to leave, I suppose the boys that um, I'd become really close with was so hard. And yeah. coming down to a foreign place where I barely knew anyone. Mm. So, um, yeah. And so that's the 19. What about the signing of the contract so far out? Was that just because you just wanted to get it out of the way or? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted it over and done with. Mm. Uh, it's so stressful going through that part of it. Yeah. And I, don't, I honestly don't know how boys without managers do it. Yeah. I could not walk into a club and the CEO and have that awkward conversation with them. <laughs> yeah. like, mate, yeah. mate, I'm worth this yeah. much. I want this. Oh, holy. Just shit like that. Yeah. Like, there's no chance I could do that. So I'm glad I have the manager for that part of it. Thanks, yeah. um, big Davo, Dave Riolo. Um, so he did that part of it and I wanted no part in that. Like mm. I just said to Dave, can you please just go and get what's the best you can do and I'll, I'll make my decision. I obviously took advice from people. Yeah. Um, had conversations with different people and got advice and, and did all that and mm. I just wanted it done. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it, just to get it out of the way. You don't want to drag it on throughout the season. Right? Absolutely. So 2020 though rolls around and uh, this is obviously the sea. This is where the famous Origin victory. Yes. 2020. Famous mullet too. Famous mullet. Skullet. Yes. Oh, the skullet. Holy, was that a dare or what? Nah, that was. I knew we were in COVID. Yeah. And we were locked up and i decided that i wanted to raise money for charity so yeah. i decided to go stupid with it yeah and i remember i think it was pt and bryce cartwright had said to me you won't shave the top you look ruthless <laughs> and obviously <laughs> i knew it was going to look shit. yeah yeah and they were saying to me uh oh bro you look mad oh, just shave the top yeah, yeah, obviously knew they were being derricks yeah, yeah, but yeah. i went ah stuff it i'm in COVID. i can't go anywhere who gives a shit? i'm stuck at home who gives a shit i yeah. may as well make it funny or as funny yeah. as possible and raise money for charity and yep. and do that and um <laughs> it also worked out perfectly that you know my mum had hodgkin's lymphoma which mm. is a type of blood cancer mm. and the world's greatest shave ended up being a, yeah. a charity for blood cancer so yep. i'd always wanted to 
I suppose do something for that yeah. because you know seeing my mum go through chemo and, mm. and having Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. No, it's uh, mate. It was it was so funny, honestly, so age. funny. And it sounds like the boys. Yeah, it looked mad, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, bro. It looked hectic. Fuck off, bro. <laughs> uh, um, and so that's so. This is the season that yeah, you guys, um, the famous Origin win. Yep. And uh, like what? I guess mate. what was it like? Just just walk us through because it's it, you know you had all the chat before it. And then you just come out and you just do what you do. Um, look, there's there's always one thing in my career that I've always, I'll always remember, and that's the 2020 Origin Series. It was my first series win. Uh, the circumstances were so different. We were locked up, locked away, and the whole the whole time in that bubble, Wayne just made it so fun for us, and we become such a tight group. We won the unwinnable. You know, we got told we were the worst Queensland origin side in history, <laughs> you know, all of the above. Yeah. And I probably could understand that mm. in the sense that they're probably comparing us to the goats in yeah. you know, Smith, Slater, Cronk, yeah. Thurston, Lockyer. Webke, Petro. Webke, all that kind of Petro, yeah. all the, Alfie, yeah. all the likes of that. So I do under, probably understand that part. Mm. But just to be able to win at Suncorp was – it was – I'll never forget a day. It was mm. something that I'll never forget. And I think one of the most enjoyable things about winning that Origin Series was, I reckon, mate, I, I can't remember how many were in the squad, but pretty much every single person come down to bar and to celebrate after. Wow. Um, every single one of them come down. Which is hard to get the whole squad down. Absolutely. Yeah. And when i remember the first night when we got down there the bussy he drove us down after the game because this, oh, this was at the end of the season too wasn't it yeah it was at the end of the so season you didn't have to worry about yeah. going back and playing and i think at the time there was 10 of us we booked this mad house yeah just outside of byron it was 12 bedrooms oh. it's like a big mansion yeah. yeah but then as soon as we won all the boys were like we're all going yeah for sure for and sure. on the bus <laughs> uh I put my hand up and say i was an absolute menace <laughs> after <laughs> after the game i was yeah. just so excited and yeah and whatnot um but that was probably one of the most enjoyable parts and it's so <laughs> such a surreal feeling so the game three uh, obviously that you have that big moment with teddy and teddy gets taken off with the head knock yeah just walk us through that that whole situation from from your perspective yeah it was pretty ugly i'd literally just run onto the field um uh and i remember my role uh, as a player i was i wanted to be aggressive especially in origin mm. and um, I remember I literally ran on and we kicked down and he got the ball and I remember sort of grabbing and flinging around him and coming around and I, I eventually opened my eyes and saw the ball had come out and I suppose I just wanted to rough him up, mm. which, you know, I kind of did. It was ugly. I actually, it makes me feel sick. Yeah, okay. You know, say seeing the video or photos, even though I don't see it anymore. Mm. And... I remember like I walked off and I turned around and I'd saw him on the ground mm. and I saw he was in a real bad way. Yeah. And so I just went, oh shit. I'd obviously realized I'd done the wrong thing. And so I walked over and, and I got down on one knee and put my hand up um, to, I suppose, try and stop the ref, to stop the game, to check on his health. And mm. uh, the whole situation, I remember it coming up on the big screen and the replay had come up and the whole crowd just sort of went, oh. oh. And I, it made, it did make me feel sick and something that I was definitely not proud of mm. and something that um, if I had my time back and I knew that it was, he was unconscious, I would never have done it. Mm. Um, uh, I personally, 100% can cross my heart, hope to die that I didn't know he he was in a bad way until I'd, I'd noticed and- yeah. Um, Got a bit of criticism from it all, and uh, rightly so. I, you know, I felt so bad after, and um, I'd sent him a message to say sorry and and stuff like that. So, mm. um, yeah, it was definitely ugly. But as a human being, you make mistakes, and it's something you learn from. Um, you know, I wanted to be aggressive, and it just sort of the instance it, it come out pretty pretty ugly, and and it wasn't meant. That's for sure. Mm. It's it's. I think it's. Uh when you're watching rugby league and you may, you know, let's say you haven't played in a role or whatever, it's very hard to experience how quick it is out there. 
Yeah. So it like, like that. boom, it, you, like half the stuff you don't even remember, you're just reacting off instinct. And so like when, a, when fans are watching, they're watching slow-mo replays over and over again. And so sometimes I feel even, I, I'm guilty of it too, where you go like, mate, there's plenty of time. Like, look how, like, but, they're what, but you're watching it in slow-mo. Yeah. So it makes it look, again, I'm not saying that it was a good thing at all, but it makes it look like there was more intention than there was and there was more time to make decisions. Yeah. But like, you can clearly see as soon as you realize, fuck, oh shit, he's hurt. You can clearly see you doing these ones. Yeah, absolutely. And as a player, you want to be aggressive, but I never meant for it to go that far or or anything like that. And as you said, things happen like that. And it's so hard, especially I'm fresh as a daisy. I've just come on. I want to make an impact. Yeah. I want to do something to, mm. oh, don't get me wrong. If I could take it back, I, I really wish sure. I didn't. For sure. Bit of a, oh, put me here. I'll be the first when I say it was a bit of a grub thing to do to rub his head in the ground and pick him up and yeah and something like even if he was um even if he was okay like it was a grub act i understand well, that I, I just think that like you for sure it's grub act and like i as a fan i think that shit's part of the game like as you know it, it makes it exciting for me but like we used to celebrate that kind of like how often how often do we watch old origin and we go fuck yeah like <laughs> I mean, the just nigga. quietly just quietly <laughs> but me and liam was sitting on the um on the couch at home and it was flicking through Fox though and saw like Fox League 1973 grand final. <laughs> Holy. I'm not even kidding. These blokes, mate, there was one bloke. I don't know who he was. Blokes would get up to play the ball and he was defending. He'd be in a tackle. It, as soon as their fingers or hands got on the ground, would blatantly stomp yeah. on them. One bloke stood up playing the ball, hooked another bloke in the yeah, ribs. Yeah. Mate, Obviously, it was a different time back yeah. then. Even in QCO, when I was coming through, they used to step on your hands. Yeah, yeah. Just like oh, the old go. battlers and that, they used yeah. to intentionally step on your hands. So, like, you know, like, obviously it wasn't a good look, but at the same no, time... Absolutely not. The, it's not like you meant to do it. It's just no. bad timing didn't come off right. Yeah, now. it was definitely bad timing. Yeah. But, you know, it's something that I've moved on from. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know he's, you know, he's obviously fine and okay, and mm. he come out and said there's you no, know, there's no bad blood, so yeah. it definitely helps, you know, when he did that. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, well, it's just honestly the worst timing ever. Because like, <laughs> let's let's no. say let's say he's sweet, like yeah, it's grubby for sure. Like there's no one denying that, oh, yeah, but like absolutely. that's kind of your role, like like just to yeah, just what? to niggle a bit. Yeah, especially in Origin yeah. Game Three, decider at Suncorp. Right. Man, you got 52,000 lunatic Queenslanders Mate, screaming you, and yelling at you. You find me one Queensland side or one New South Wales side that doesn't do that, I'll fucking, I'll shut up. But every, every origin Mate, side has that in it. One of my teammates, Damien Cook, last year. Last year, game three origin. Yeah. I didn't think he had it in him. Oh, they say so undercover drug. This, no, yeah, I didn't think he had this in him. Yeah. Um, I'd carried the ball. And he come down on top of me and elbowed me straight in the face. And I went, okay. <laughs> I said, I thought, okay, that's play on. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. I don't blame you for that. So, yeah. and everyone thinks he's the... Clean cut. Yeah, cl everyone thinks he's clean cut. Grub. He's got a little bit of filth in him too, Damien Cook. Grubbiest so, hooker in the game. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Cookie um, and grub. Yeah, and it's it's really good to see Teddy that Teddy was okay. Like, yeah, it, absolutely. Like, that was my that was my biggest thing. Biggest thing was to know that he was okay, and I asked yeah. if he was okay after the game as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, thank God he was. Otherwise, yeah. probably still haunt me. Fuck. Um, now, is it Saluka for feeder? Is that yeah, yeah, big deal? Okay, so you play the <laughs> <laughs> so you play the Roosters. And he gets fired up and yeah. punches you in the back of the head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck? The big fella saw red. Yeah, no, nah, it, it's obvious. He's at the club now and we're sweet. Mate, it's footy. Yeah, it's absolutely. Oh, I didn't take any offence yeah. to it, or, nor did I. I knew that the media had built it up. Yeah. That, that were coming for me. I, I don't know whether it was spoken about throughout the week or whatever. And I definitely knew they were coming for me because that was a, the first time I was you know, <laughs> going to play Teddy. And yeah. um, to be honest, like if it was the roles reversed, you'd probably be coming for- Possibly, yeah. Well, well. well, definitely. You always want to look yeah. after your teammate. Yeah, and I have sure. No doubts that they did. And I just come to South Sydney and got it. You know, I was invested in that South Sydney, Sydney Roosters rivalry, and there was just so much to play for. And um, yeah, Big Dan, I suppose, exploded. And um, 
<laughs> got me in the back of the head, but um, oh, I stirred I stirred him up a fair bit too, like on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's all all love now. He's yeah. a, he's actually a really good fella, eh? Like a yeah. really good fella and someone uh, I'm getting closer to and mm. and getting to actually know him. He's and, a big boy. Uh, yeah, he's huge, so ah. that doesn't help. <laughs> and he boxes too. So oh, he actually boxes. <laughs> yeah. He actually boxes. So Fuck that that actually scared the crap out of me. <laughs> um, because, and I said it after the game, mate, I couldn't fight myself out of a wet paper bag. Like, I'm happy to stir a few people up. If, if honestly, if that would have hit me, I don't know what I'd do. I reckon I'd sit there like a stun mark going, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? No, just wrestle. Just yeah. just get in close and wrestle. I don't reckon I'd throw one back either. I reckon I'd be the type of go, just do the old, ah, oh, no, nah, you're getting sin bin. <laughs> 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 Hide behind the sin bin. Um, were the boys so when he rocked up to, to training for the first time? Were the boys giving it to him and like you? Uh, there was a bit of banter, yeah. Uh, the boys say if I was giving a little bit of lip to the boys, they'd say shut up or we'll get Dan onto you. <laughs> uh, there was a bit of that, and there was one day. I think there was one day I wasn't there, and usually when new guys come in or there's young boys, we have the three questions, and at the time it was Marky Nichols, the goat, and Tommy Burgess. Mm. Uh, I was away. I'm pretty sure I might have been in camp for Origin. Mm. And they'd uh, ask him, the, they said to Dan, oh, mate, we're going to go a bit off track with these questions, but um, you've done what a lot of people at this club <laughs> have wanted to do for a long time. Yeah. Can you please tell us what it was like to punch John? <laughs> <laughs> and then apparently he, um, all in good spirit, he looked left and looked right and said, it felt unreal <laughs> and yeah, the, the whole the whole room erupted so yeah, yeah. um you know it was obviously that banter between us and yeah um but if there's no banter at a rugby league side then you're not having fun yeah um, for sure i don't know about other teams but <coughs> us boys at at our team at the moment at south are absolutely ruthless yeah. with the uh banter I can, I can imagine i can imagine so just back to that uh, origin series was that game one of the fastest you've ever played in like was it one of the craziest you've ever played in or 2020 2020 or was 2022 series no nah, the game three 22 was that was fucking wild yeah even because i watched that ga that whole game back because mm. uh, it was a pretty special one and so many people had talked about it mm. about how fast and physical and it just you were on the edge of your seat the whole time and I watched it back and it was literally like that for the whole 80 the minutes. Whole time. You did not know what was going to happen. Mm. And you can see boys just out on their feet in the mm. second half, even in the first half, the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, in the sting of the game, boys are out on their feet. Uh, I felt like that game was played on a lot of emotion. Mm. So physical, fast. And um, that was definitely a special one. Probably yeah. the one of if not the best win that i've been a part of was that yeah. last year's game three benny hunt dozer dozer go dozer Mate, go best dozer ever. best ever <laughs> best ever um so let's talk about the 2021 series though new south wales come out and just fucking just play some of the best footy we've ever seen in origin yeah what was that i guess from your perspective was the, what was the feeling like in camp um, and I know you had the had that yeah, issue as well. Yeah, mate. Uh, uh, yeah. I had <laughs> was that, that issue. Game one or two? The uh, game three. So game ring three. camp at game three, and I had a little mishap and mistake that I made, and you know I've taken ownership and full responsibility for for what I did, and mm. it was the wrong thing to do, and um, the series was gone by then. Not saying that's a factor or why I did it. Did what I did, but. Um, yeah, look, it was it was a tough one, a, a tough pill to swallow. You know, losing the first two games and series was wrapped up, and mm. um, you know, probably what stung more was they'd beaten us twice in Queensland. Yeah, and um, play for Queensland, all you want to do is make your state proud, and mm. um, you know, your state proud, and, and we got flogged by fifty on in game one yeah game two you know we got towed up at suncorp which is that's our home that's mm. where we get the crowd behind us and you know it was a pretty you know hard feeling to to i suppose swallow but i remember watching from home game three uh, when the boys played on the gold coast they got that win and 
um, you know, thank God for that because, um, you know, going down 3 0 in your home state <sighs> mate. just would have absolutely crushed yeah. not only us, but, mate, more importantly, the, the fans. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Like it was a, it was a crazy series and, and full credit to uh, New South Wales. So 2021, you guys go all the way to the GF. Mm. What do you remember from that GF week and everything leading into it and the game? The week was pretty surreal. Uh, it was very different to what it was like before COVID. Mm. Um, but uh, obviously you have to do all your photo shoots, interviews, yeah. promos, photos, all of the above leading up. It's a, it's a pretty busy week. You honestly don't really have much time to think about the game. It's mm. more um, promos and whatnot and mm. training. Um, don't, don't remember leading that day leading up to the game mm. i do remember her getting obviously, obviously i got ko'd not ko'd but concussed yeah first carry as soon as i'd come on the field uh that that probably stings that mm. start or it does sting to this day and it was you know a pretty rough pretty rough rough way to go out mm. um yeah, i had a pretty good final series leading up to that and was you know happy how i was going individually i just Again, wanted to bring aggr aggressiveness and <laughs> kick out got me first <laughs> before I got him. So that's <laughs> off to him. And um, it was definitely a tough way to go out and mm. to lose a grand final. Um, you know, Wayne's always said, the further you go, the more it hurts. And mm. definitely it, that's the way it goes. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, and again, it was such a close final. Like they came out and killed it this year, Penrith. But like... <laughs> You know, six points or whatever it ended up being like two, oh. two points, 14, oh, 12. You scored at the end there, didn't you? Um, yeah, far out. And we we're full of confidence too because we played them in the first final mm. uh, and beat them. And beat so them, yeah. we're, mate, we we're full of confidence. Yeah. We knew that we could beat this side when very, very few sides have beaten them over the last couple of years. Mm. And, you know, we we're full of confidence. And we were we were so ready for it, and just unfortunate that you know the result didn't go our way. But my Penrith have been absolute; they have been the best side. Yeah, you know, since what year? Like over the past couple of years now. So yeah, for sure. Massive credit to them and all the su success that they've had. Yeah, over these you know years. Um, and so, like heading into this year, is it you know you've got Lockie Elias has an extra year under his belt. Yeah. Cody Walker has an extra year playing with another It's not good player. for him. He's getting old. But mate. <laughs> is he getting grumpier by the day or what? Oh, mate. Fuck I reckon he's been grumpy since day one. Can you tell yeah. him, like, tell his face to look happy just once? Non-stop abuse. Absolute, <laughs> absolute abuse he did to, gives at training. It's funny, though. It's so funny. angry, bro. Yeah. Like, does he know he's playing NRL and, like, <laughs> That's there's it. a gun player? I don't think he does. Can you tell his face nah, that look, or what? In all honesty, though, it, it just goes to show how competitive he is as yeah, a bloke. Yeah, sure. I don't like giving him raps because he's an absolute, he's an absolute <laughs> asshole to me. And he knows I can, I cop abuse. I can, I can cop it. So yeah. he's happy to apps. And I was his back roll, so that didn't help as yeah. well. What's um, it like being inside a guy like Cody, who's quite fiery and gets in, gets in amongst? Oh, it? I love it. I don't mind it. It's, yeah. it's good for me because yeah. he's always the one stirring shit. Where I can just come and sort of break it up and look yeah. like the good bloke. So, <laughs> uh, thanks, Coates. Um, yeah, those two. Sorry. What's it? What's it like? Um, I guess playing, you know, with a guy like Cody. Like his ball skills are just. And I know you like don't get like giving him compliments, but it's honestly some of the best I personally have ever seen. Yeah, he's so. I don't know if this works, but he's so structurally instinctive. Mm. Um, he always seems to come up with the right play. He's, um, he's so competitive. He just he wants to be the best every week, mm. every day. Yeah. Uh, he spat the dummy. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> spat the dummy at training one day. We we're playing a game, and I, I grabbed Cookie and Taff, and I was like, "Let's get Cody." Like, yeah. we we're playing a, a conditioning game, and we ended up telling him up. Oh no! And he was filthy. <laughs> <laughs> and we were giving it to him after. I'm not even kidding. Like, we got it was the end of the session. We we'd gone in, and <laughs> we'd gone in. We were still giving it to Cody, and he goes. It's after training, let's fucking go then. He goes, go on, get the ball, let's go play again. <laughs> I was honestly feel wanted to go and JD started speaking. He started walking off and realised and he'd come back and was just standing outside the circle. 
with his big frown on his face. Didn't want a bar of absolute anyone. Hopped in his car, pissed off back to training. Oh. He's the oh, best. Oh, that's the best. Fuck it. I mean, that's what you want from your, your leader in the in the half. You want him to be competitive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, he's just so good to have around as well. He's actually, not many people would probably know this, but he's actually a good bloke. He actually is a he good bloke. He actually is a legend of a <laughs> yeah. bloke and yeah. I have a lot of time for codes. Um, it's almost like if the shitty you say a bloke is, like if you keep saying, mate, absolute punish, you actually probably love him even more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, now, ask all the boys this, favourite rapper of all time? <laughs> Yeah, good question. You could just do musician if it's musician. If you're not a rapper. Oh, uh, gonna I'll probably say Tupac. Tupac? 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 I don't Tupac. know how to say it. Pac. Yeah, one of the goats. Yeah. Great music. Great music. Favorite movie of all time? Step Brothers. Step Brothers? Oh, that's <laughs> such a good movie. <laughs> oh man. They should love do a Step Brothers too. I love I a comedy, eh, hey, bro? Oh, actually, I think Will Farrell and him aren't getting along anymore. Really? Yeah. John C. Riley. Apparently it was talk of Step Brothers too. That oh, I swear that's just a hoax. Surely though. Yeah. Imagine Step Brothers 2. <laughs> how good it would be. Oh, I'd love it. Oh, it'd be so good. Um, mate, if everything happens perfectly over the next 12 months, where are you and what are you doing? I'll be at pre-season. Yeah? Yeah. But like if everything happens perfectly, like have you won a premiership? Yeah. Have you, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't want to like jinx it or anything. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Sweet. Yep. And I'll go on a mad trip at the end of the year like I did last year. Where, where are you going? If you, if you win a prem, where are you going? Oh, are you ever coming Vegas? back? Are you ever coming back if you win a premiership? Yeah, I don't know. That's a scary <laughs> thing. <laughs> Vegas for sure. Yeah. Uh, I just recently come back from there in yeah. October. Oh, I'm going back. <laughs> I'm going back. Uh, mate, thank you so much for coming on, bro. I really do appreciate it. No, nah, thank you. Boom. That's keys.